what's happening guys I am so sorry I've neglected you and I am back with a series of commentary DVRs I apologize I've been in California for the last 10 days uh, five races in 10 days yes that's five races in 10 days so my wife and I are very exhausted but boy oh boy have do I have some new knowledge for you guys uh, maybe it's nothing new to you but it's something that's brand new to me so I'm opening up this segment. This is just uh, the beginning of our team race. Uh, uh, team Emax took third place. Uh, I was super, super stoked. Uh, I, I was with a couple of, of good buddies and uh, one of my best buds, Mr. Zach Thayer. It was awesome finally being on the same team with a noob himself. I'm um, cheering for the guy, so make sure you root for him at DRL. Uh, yeah, so this was just a very basic course. Uh, this is at uh, Open Grove Raceway. Uh, I had the, the best of times at this race. Uh, the guys there really know how to run the show. They uh, just smiles everywhere, and I'm sure that every single person that was there at this race can attest to that. So, uh, guys, I salute you, man. Uh, we need to tailor our races, and we need to follow your lead for sure because you guys know how to get it done. So, I really appreciate the heck out of you guys. All right, and with that said, let's talk about the first, the first big thing that I've learned at this race now, you can see this is a team race track. This is still a big track and it's all about efficiency here. And you can see that I'm dropping down at 12 volts and I'm, I'm trying to cruise at a good, comfortable, solid pace. I was racing my buddy Alex Campbell, AKA the chief in this heat. So I had my nerves rattled. Uh, we were both rolling, having a great time. Uh, but yeah, I, I, in this particular run, I was actually using uh, old, old motors. Uh, they were actually old biking motors because uh, they were 2600 kV, they were the lowest that I had at this race. Uh, I, was, I was running the, uh, the RS2306 2750s on 4-cell because I couldn't get any 6S packs in time and uh, I'm going to be honest with you, on all of my 6S endeavors and experiences all throughout DR1 and everything thereafter, I just threw a 6S pack on my 2750s and let it eat. And it was, oh baby, it was fast. Or so I thought. Okay, here we are. Qualifier number one, day one for individual racing. Uh, you can see here I'm at 17.1 volts, so I'm running the Pulse 1550 HV uh, packs, uh, four cell obviously. Uh, I'm running the RS2306 2750s on, this is gonna be the Cyclone 5046 prop. You can see that I had one mistake. That was my only mistake right there. And uh, you could see here, look at my voltage. I'm, you, could, you could tell I'm being very mindful. I, I'm getting on it and then getting off of it, getting on it. And you could see 12.4 volts. Every time you could, you could see, as soon as I, I hit the plastic at full throttle, I'm dropping to 12 volts and you'll start to see 11 volts. You'll start to see 10 volts. Uh, so I'm being very mindful because the day before I had one practice and I managed to finish four laps. It was a very, it was a good solid solid run and uh, I was barely able to land at the LZ. I was barely able to get the LZ after four laps. So I knew that today I needed to be very cautious of my throttle. And I had just watched uh, I just watched Heads Up FPV do a six. He, he completed six laps. So I knew I was already in trouble. Uh, so I was just out there trying to get some good solid laps, and I was trying to get to four laps. Uh, I am, I'm going fast here, I'm figuring out my spirals here, but the thing that's just kind of got me flustered is I know that I can't push it. If I push it, I'm not going to make it to that four laps. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I got to get into the top 20. I have to get a top 20 time. Uh, I know that if we go the distance, if, that if they go in the mains and they go the same two minutes, I have no chance. But I'm still trying to qualify here, so I'm being, being very, very cautious and mindful. Uh, I'm trying to let it, let, kind of let it eat in the turns and I'm backing off in the straight. You can see how it drops to 11.4 volts there, 10.7 volts there, 10 volts there again. And that's every time that I'm hitting a hairpin turn. I'm just, those, the, those amp spikes are just going through the roof. So you can see here, this is on, uh, this, is, this isn't even starting lap four, I'm still on lap three, I'm starting to see a lot of 12s and 11s here. Uh, now I'm on to my, my last lap and you can see that the voltage is really starting to get hurt. 11 volts there, 11.2, uh, not good. And this is with me backing off and being very mindful. Now, I've always run high KV, always. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't, I never really knew what I was doing. I got a motor, and it's probably like, a, like really similar to what you guys do out there. You get a motor, 
You throw some props on, you try a battery, hey, is it fast? I completed a race, cool. We could see here, I'm done. I am backing off to everything. Seven volts, I literally crash through the finish line there. So, 222 four laps. I failed. I did not get into the top 20. I had to sit from the sidelines, swallow my pride, and cheer for my buddies. And it was awesome because their racing was absolutely next level. It was so close. Uh, and I just sat there and just, just thought about everything. Thought about, all right, I move forward by losing, by failing. Now how do I fix that? How do I not repeat that same mistake in the future? So my, my brains went to work, had a lot of chatting, and I uh, got ready for my call out race with Mr. Andy Doma, uh, Doma FPV. So yeah, you, you'll, you'll see that uh, in another episode, uh, I was able to go fast for three laps. Thank God it was only three laps, but what I was focused on was why the heck can't I go fast for even, for even two minutes? Right, so what I do, uh, finish the Andy race, uh, the call out, and couldn't sleep, could not sleep. The next day, Tang and I were, were uh, we went and had some, uh, some Korean barbecue there at, uh, at uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the city now. Oh, Tang's gonna get mad at me. Anyway, uh, beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, before we came back to LA, we were gonna be going to Emacs for a week to do some, uh, throw some more races uh, uh, down south, as well as me doing a bunch of testing to figure out what the heck can I put together for myself that I could start competing in these races under load. So I went back, we were, we were like, you know what, let's go back, let's go back to OGR, let's go back to Open Grove, and, uh, and Joe let us in there with open arms like he does with everybody, amazing gentleman. Uh, Tang and I went out, and I, w I just went to work. I started fixing some quads, let her uh, burn some batteries on the, on the track, and she did, she did awesome. Uh, we, broke, we broke some stuff, fixed some stuff, but I wanted to go out there. I took every single quad that I had in my bag. I was like, how, all right, I'm gonna go hard and figure out what would it have even mattered? What, did I have anything in my arsenal that was even competitive on 4S? Was it even, was it even, a, was there even a chance? So, I, uh, I flew some 2550, some, uh, some of the LS uh, 2207 2550 motors. Uh, I flew them on the Avan props, I flew them on Cyclones, I flew them on, even on some HQ props that, that uh, Preston Garrison and I stole from Alex's bag while he was racing. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this, in the very end, it didn't, it didn't matter. Uh, I could not have finished that six lap at the pace. Uh, if I slowed down a little too much, I couldn't even get on that, that, uh, on that six lap pace. Um, but I was quite surprised to find something in my bag that I never would have expected. Check this out. Okay, here we are the next day. This is probably my fourth or fifth battery and I decided to pull this rig out just to see what the heck. It just had a stock whip antenna on it. Uh, I'll let you kind of uh, use your imagination as far as what kind of quad cupper this is. Uh, it had a stock whip antenna. Uh, yeah. So anyway, obviously we'll start the timer there. And uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to hide. There was there was a flag that was down there, as well as there was a gate after the spiral that uh, that you'll see that was they, that uh, the crew had taken down because it was really windy. Uh, so I still maintained and, and went around that flag where it was supposed to be, as well as going around that gate right there. You can see right there where the gate was laid on the ground. But you could see now. Take a look at my voltage and look at my amp draw. There's a big difference. Um, so I'm gonna tell you where the magic is. These motors, lo and behold, they're only 2300 kV. Now we all watched Mr. Chance Hartman, AKA Freefall, just do, just kill the course. He did an amazing job. We were all screaming for him. Like those Lumineer motors, ain't, it, it's, it's, uh, it's no secret. We know how efficient those suckers are. Now this here, this quad, did not feel any faster to me. I'm just like, okay, well, I, I just noticed I'm able to, I'm pushing it here. I'm, I'm able to stay in the throttle. I'm not worrying so much about having to back off because I'm like, well, obviously I don't give a crap. I mean, if I fall out before the time goes, then fine. 
but I'm, I was noticing that I'm not getting this crazy sag that I was getting with my 2750s. And uh, this the same props, same everything. Uh, I'm not any more or less comfortable on the track here. I, all it is is that I'm not having to fight the rig so much. I'm just flying. I'm not worrying about voltage sag. I'm not worrying about falling out. And I'm not having this dip and this in instant pop that I was getting with the 2750s that almost just as quickly fell back off. And you can see here, the voltage is done. I went hard, absolutely hard, and barely got through there. But take a look at the lap times and the total time. All right, so 30 seconds faster in four laps. 30 seconds faster. 2306, 2750 kV on the same exact battery, same exact prop. Right here, on the same exact setup that I raced Andy. Same, same, same. Obviously the motors have changed now because they're a little bit different. My mindset's a little bit different, but same quad. That's what I flew against Andy, 2750 kV. Average 30 to 40 second laps. 222, what I fly, what was so magical? Bone stock, Emax Hawk 5, fine and fly, bone stock, 2206, 2300 kV, the fastest four lap time period. Like, I didn't want to believe it, I was in shock. I was talking to some guys in uh, one of my chat rooms and they were laughing at me, I said, uh, I was taking a bath, I had my goggles on just reviewing DVR footage, yes, I know it sounds ridiculous and funny, but that's what I was doing. And I remembered I was just kind of looking at the uh, the DVR the uh, on the the uh, the OSD. I was just kind of like trying to to mentally take uh, roughly how fast lap times were. And I almost fell out of the shower. I was like, "What the heck? It, it can't be that fast." It was that fast. It didn't look any faster to me. It looked a little smoother, but uh, yeah, Bone Stock Hawk Five, Pulse fifteen fifty four SHV, same props. 151. Yes, it did fall out on that last lap, but the difference was I was able to push this thing the whole time, and I was pushing it comfortably. It was a comfortable pace. Even though it was a much faster pace, obviously, it was just comfortable because I wasn't fighting the rig. So, my conclusions. Uh, the 2750s are great. Had I been flying maybe a different battery, like a 3-cell. So we think about it, right? I was t saying that I was dipping out, like I was, I was hitting 11 volts sometimes. Well, a, a storage charged three cell LiPo is what, 11.4 volts? And I'm here I am flying an HV four cell, dropping to 11 volts. Yeah, it'll make a whole lot of sense to me, right? Like I'm not getting any of that power. It's actually worse. So I'm gonna tell you on this particular racetrack and for me personally, 2300 kV it is on 4S. And uh, now things are changing because now we're going 5 and 6S. And oh yeah, those motors there, that's 6S on the stock Magnum stack on a Hawk 5. What? Believe it. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, no, no secret. I am testing 6S on the stock Magnum on a stock Hawk 5. Uh, yeah, and it works. I'm messing with different KV options, and I'm still falling out of the sky. I had, I had some races there in, uh, in uh, San Diego, as well as uh, doing some regional qualifier stuff. So I'm super stoked. But yeah, I'm forever changed as far as my mentality when it comes to KV. So these last runs here are just some, uh, just a couple of runs after that, uh, that previous video. But uh, yeah, just if there's uh, any doubt, you can take a look at the lap times here. I'm not going to post them up, but the 24 second laps, 24 second laps on a bone stock fine and flight rig, which was, it basically put my build to shame. Uh, so my eyes have been opened and uh, I hope this helps you guys with any of your future builds or any ideas. I know that I've done a review on the Hawk 5 saying that, you know, it's a very good rig. I, I said it's even possibly capable of being a primary rig. Well, <laughs> at this race on this, this, this track that this is by far the biggest track that I have ever raced on, uh, as far as our runtime, it was the king in what I had in my bag. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the Hawk 5 another absolute A plus thumbs up because man, it sure did work.
guys, thanks so much for watching. And uh, again, don't ever take any of these DVR tutorials as uh, law. <laughs> this is just my own personal experience, and I hope it helps you out. Later, guys.